Hi Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for August 2018. And before we jump in Aquarius, I have got an awesome deal going on with the Astrology 101 and 102 classes. And I hope you will check out the video so that you understand the hows and whys of what's going on and join these classes. I mean, they're at a discount rate. You can take Astrology 101 for $40 or take them both for 75. That's pretty freaking good. And there's some excitement behind them. So click in the description box down below, check out the link and check out the video and or check out the video so you know exactly what's going on. All right, Aquarius, I have to tell you, I feel like you are just having a spiritual nutrition kind of month. Like you are just getting nourished, nourished, nourished. And in terms of plans and dreams and goals and projects and relationships you've had going on, especially over this last year, I really feel like you've been running a little bit malnourished, but you weren't completely aware of it yet. You know what I mean? And this month you are just being spiritual actually fed. Like I love this month for you. So let's jump in and talk about it. Okay. Now, right here on the sixth of the month, we've got Venus entering into the sign of Libra, which is partnerships, beautiful energy anyways. But for you, this is in the ninth house. And I could not think of a better way for you to be starting this month because we're coming in in a heck of a lot of retrograde energy. We're still revising, re-editing. There's not a lot of forward motion happening for us. And this lights up, brings harmony, brings magnetism, brings some peace to your ninth house of faith. Faith, faith, faith. I think you have gotten to see over this last six months how much of you has to actually get out of the way to let something magic, something bigger, unfold for you and kind of help guide you whatever that's looked for in your life looked like in your life now for some of you it may be education you know what i mean you are moving forward at this time with some education or it's starting to the plan for education is starting to become abundantly clear maybe you've been working on something in school you've been working something in philosophy advertising, broadcasting, sales, getting yourself out there in a different way. But the thing I love about this energy for you that it feels like during this month is it's just a lot more humble. There's just a humility here to kind of go be in the now, be the water, go around the rocks. You know what I'm saying? So it feels just very good for you to be coming into the month here. But if you are a student or something like that, um, doing anything internationally, this may bring a little bit of um, diplomacy and harmony to this area of your life. Now, on the seventh, we've got Uranus going retrograde in the sign of Taurus. Now, this is in your fourth house. Why I think this is critical to understand and for you specifically to study is not only because it is your ruling planet, but because in the fourth house, when Uranus goes retrograde, instead of making all of this external instability happen, what he's doing is he's tearing down these things inwardly for you and helping you detach from them. This idea of who you were, who you thought you were, who you think it should be moving forward. This is a surrender energy because he's breaking down the structures of your foundations, right? Your internal foundations, the first home, which is the fourth house that you have are these internal foundations and structures. And you've got to tear those down so that you can be spiritually fed and reset and rebuilt in the form and the foundation that can carry you through this next journey of your life. Now, for some of you with Uranus going retrograde here too, you will experience um, home, family, real estate, property issues, right? Things could definitely come up. But ultimately, I think what the home zone right now is about is that level of intuitiveness, creativeness, and freedom, all right? Now, on the 11th, we've got a new moon partial, partial solar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo. So this is your seventh house. OK, so this is the place of relationships, right? So relationships are on the table. They're up for conversation. And here's the deal. We've also got Mercury retrograde over here in the seventh house space as well. So what does this look like? This is still our new moon for the month. So at the new moon, we plant our seeds of intention. Where do we want to go? This is our beginning energy. And it's pretty, this is a pretty intense one. It's a solar eclipse. So you're going to have it for the next six months playing out in your life, right? And where I think this is beautiful for you with Mercury retrograde here is if you've had relationship issues, you've had a falling out with somebody, you felt disconnected from yourself, whatever the situation connected to a relationship, including friendships, um, and including 
including work for some of you. Um, this actually, I think, puts a little bit of a healing salve on it and gives you this place with the solar eclipse of a new beginning. You can move forward free of some of those ties that were binding you down or maybe some of the things you needed to make decisions on in relationships. You get to move forward now at the end of the month free and it all kicks off right here at this solar eclipse, okay? Now, on the 12th, Mars is going to enter into Capricorn. But here's the deal. Coming into the month, Mars is still retrograde, okay? But he's retrograde from the 1st to the 12th in your sign. So you may literally, this I think looks a couple different ways because you guys are a little bit more erratic than some of the other signs. So I think for some of you, you've been like, oh my God, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do this thing. Let's go, 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 go. But this is not go energy, especially with Mars in your sign, right? Now, for the other side of this, I think some of you, it's helped you surrender. It's helped you to slow down enough, take your hands off of the wheel, stop, take the choke hold off of your life and allow some things to unfold. But energetically, it will be a, a pause for all of us. There's just no shooting forward. Now here on the 12th, I think that this intensifies the slowdown because Mars is actually going to be moving into Capricorn, which goes back and lights up your 12th house space, our quiet space, the I need to get away, rest, rejuvenate, kind of you know, stand back and get away from people and these things for a minute. It's basically like a big old go hide in the cave time. But for you, what I also think it's about is understanding that by actually taking your hands off of your life for a minute, that you've been spiritually fed. You get to go back here into this quiet place for yourself. And if you're a researcher, maybe um, research information is going to present itself again, maybe things from the past. I think for many of you, what's going to happen is you're going to relook at where you're spiritual centers are? What are your attachments you still have? What's holding you back? What's holding you down? What's in that shadow place you don't want to tell people, but if you don't share it with somebody, you're not going to be free, right? You keep Your secrets keep you sick, that kind of thing. So letting go, it's just a beautiful surrender time. Now on the 19th, Mercury is going to come direct in the sign of Leo. So again, here in the relationship zone. And I think conversation gets better here. The falling out maybe you had, okay, now we can have a conversation. In committed relationships with Mercury direct, we can communicate more clearly, more efficiently. It's received better, right? Because everybody's getting back online with coming back into direct motion. Of course, this will depend on your chart because if you natally have Mercury retrograde in your chart, this energy will affect you a little bit differently. But the Mercury coming direct is basically a pretty good thing for the general, right? Now, on the 23rd, the sun's going to enter into Virgo, lighting up um, the space where we get to communicate about some of our deepest fears, our intimacies, our um, connections to other people. What do you want? Where are you willing to go? What's the mystic truth about what's what's been kind of sitting in the bottom of who you are as a person? What's this root idea that you've been basing your life on? Because a lot's been shifting so they can watch it get different, right? And sometimes I think the most difficult and scary thing that we do in the world is actually trust that it's all going to be okay and let go, right? So very surrendery, let go kind of month, but very spiritual. On this 26th, we've got the full moon happening in Pisces. This lights up your second house. So it tells me that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. For you, Aquarius, for some of you, I feel like it's you're getting a new job, right? Or you're able to do something or something comes into your world or becomes apparent and available in your world where you can take a skill out into the world and make money with it. Maybe you're also... Um, reevaluating the way that you're making money or a talent that you could be using. You guys tend to like to be kind of um, entrepreneurial. Even if you take a company job, you kind of have a little thing on the side that's pretty common or pretty typical, not for every single one of you. But this could be something too where you're thinking about um, lighting or starting that back up or adjusting that or something like that. So the second house will definitely be under some reevaluation. Definitely relook at that budget as well. Now on the 27th, Mars is going to come direct. Thank you. Oh my goodness. In the sign of Capricorn. So in your 12th house. So I think some of this spiritual nourishment, you start to realize that you've been pulled really far back over the last couple months, but it's like that arrow, you pull it back and when you let it go, it gets to shoot forward. But this time you're not doing it starving, right? You are, you are fed, you are nourished and you are full as we end this month. And that's how you got to be so that you've got enough give to give as we get into the forward moving energies of September and moving forward. All right, Aquarius, I hope that this video finds you well. I'm sending you a ton of love, too much to hold on to, right? <laughs> like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope to see you in the classes, but I'll definitely see you next month, okay?
Bye.